Welcome, everyone, back to the School of Greatness podcast. I'm here with Sophia Amoruso. Good to see you. High fives in the house. <laughs> How you doing? Good. Uh, very excited to have you on. We connected through Chase Jarvis. Yeah, we did. Remember? Yeah, was, we were just in the same room yes. at the same time, and it was like, oh, hey. And I was like, hey, and you're cool. Let's have you on. And then we had sushi. We had sushi at Sugarfish, and we talked uh-huh. about internet marketing. Totally. And how to build online courses Crazy and rabbit hole. and funnels. And yeah. Are you still in that, figuring on that out? A little hire? bit. Yeah. I think that's like a later phase. Yeah. I think I'm still like you've, audience developing. You've got so much going on right now, though. You've yeah. got this book, which is incredible, Girl Boss, which has sold how many copies now? Over 300,000. 300,000. That's like top 1% of 1% of all books, probably. It's amazing. I don't know. So yeah, congratulations thanks. Thank you. for all uh, the ladies, especially. Make sure to check this book out, Girl Boss. Hashtag Girl Boss. Dudes, dudes, like, dudes can check tweet, it out too. They tweet I mean, me and they're like, It's I funny. Know. I thought this book was for girls, and it's like, I don't really talk about being a girl that much in it. But it's, it's really funny, though. There's some good stuff in here. And um, so make sure to check thanks. this book out. You also have a new cool. book coming out called. I have a book coming out October 4th called <laughs> Nasty Galaxy. Okay. Um, and it's a totally different book, but it's the spirit of Girl Boss. It's still super inspiring. Um, yeah really visual so it's like 10 by 10 hardcover coffee table perfect linen cover just super beautiful um and it has like inspirational quotes and essays by me and mm. q and a's with different inspiring women and courtney love wrote the foreword and nice. um you know uh, a tour of my house did i already say that no that's cool um, and you live in hollywood i live in los angeles los angeles i live in different places All no over. i live generally in hollywood yeah yeah, yeah. Cool. I think I can say that. There you go. Yeah. We met near there, right? We yeah, met, totally. We met a sugar fish near there. Yeah. And um, the book is coming out in October, correct? October 4th. You can pre-order it at nastygal.com slash okay. book. There you go. <laughs> See a cool trailer of you. And you also have yeah. a show coming out. It's next year. Okay. So it's currently in development. They're gotcha. sh- they've been shooting it for a few months now. They're going to be up in San Francisco shooting it starting, right. I think, next week. Okay. Um, and that's called Girl Boss, Insane. and it's going to be on Netflix. It's amazing, and it's based on it's based my on story. Your life. Yeah, your name is the character's name, right? Yeah. First name, last name, or is it just the first just name? Just the first name. What's the last name? I I don't think I'm allowed to say that. Okay, gotcha. I don't know what I can. Whatever's out there, wraps. I can basically say. Gotcha. I don't. know. Netflix is is a is a is a beast. So gotcha. That's I just cool. Want to be good. But you have so many amazing things going on, and yeah. you started a company called Nasty Gal, which I was just in Santa Monica. Oh yeah. Did I? Oh, I was mentioning that I was going to text you an image oh. of people walking in your store. Oh cool. It was it's amazing. Huge. Thanks. On the promenade right there. Yeah. yeah. So you started this company. Started Nasty Gal's an eBay yeah. store ten years ago. Ten years ago. Ten in November. It's been ten. That's incredible growth. In 10 years. It's a lot. But like, yeah. you know, you start when you're 22, you can only hope you grow a whole lot between right. 22 and 32. Jeez. Was that always a dream for you to start like this no. retail clothing? No, I didn't really. I didn't know line. what my dream was. I wanted to be a photographer, but I couldn't like get over having to like make things up about why my work was important. I just really enjoyed taking pictures and I thought it was important. There's a whole like, you know, rigmarole around, you know, galleries and right. the art world. And I just... I got like a whiff of that and I just felt like I couldn't hack it and mm-hmm. I probably really couldn't. Um, I mean, maybe today I have like the social graces or yeah. network, but I don't, I'm not planning on becoming a fine artist anytime soon. Sure. Um, I, I was 22. I was working in the lobby of an art school cause I needed to get health insurance cause I had a hernia and that was a time when you couldn't get health insurance if you had a pre-existing condition. I guess it's right. totally different now, yep. but I had to go get a job through an employer because you had to get group insurance, and then they have to take you if you have cancer or AIDS or a hernia. Wow. So that's why I got my last job, and I was working in the lobby of an art school in San Francisco, checking student IDs. Um, I was like a like a glorified uh, like security guard, but my title was campus safety host. Okay. And I just sat behind At this 21? desk. 22, yeah. Wow. So I dropped out of community college, decided I wasn't going to go to art school, decided to work at one because I need to get my hernia fixed, and was just checking IDs in the lobby. Um, that's it, all day? That's all I did. I just sat there. Um, <laughs> my title was campus safety host. Uh-huh. Anyway, yeah. Uh, it was like $13 an hour maybe, and even that kind of seems like a lot yeah. now. But um, It's not bad 10 years ago. No, right? Yeah. Um, and... And I was just, I had time to dick around on the internet and I was yeah. getting friend requests from eBay sellers who were trying to promote their vintage eBay stores to me. And I checked it out and realized, 
holy crap, like I know where how to, how to where to find this vintage. These girls really? are just like selling stuff that I know how to find for eight bucks and it's people are bidding on it. The customer is determining the price. What, you know? a couple hundred bucks or whatever? Yeah, 80 bucks, 200 bucks for stuff that I knew where to find it, like a Goodwill. So mm. I was like, I have a laptop. Mm. I've got a digital camera. Actually, I didn't even have a laptop at that time. I think I started the store on like my dome iMac. Sure. That was like my graduation <laughs> yeah. gift <laughs> when I actually did graduate high school. Yeah. I graduated something. So you started taking photos. So I got my hernia fixed oh, that's and decided good. to give this eBay thing a shot. Were you double dipping and working at the desk while you were working? No. Like no. Like emailing people I back should on have. eBay? I should like have. But no, I was just like, F this job. I'm going to get my hernia fixed. And I'm going to go like. And then get out. Yeah, go just buy a pile of stuff and put it on eBay and see what happens. And that's what you did. And that's what I did. I bought eBay for dummies. No way. Yeah. I think I bought another book called Tax Loopholes for eBay Sellers, actually. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Which I never read because I just like hired an accountant. But uh, yeah, so I started taking pictures of stuff, found models on MySpace, made my own MySpace page, figured out how to promote it. Um, was really engaged, really active with anyone who would accept my friend request mm. and responded to every question, wow. on every image that I would post, every item that I had for sale. I would post a bulletin. You know, it was MySpace. Like, I feel so old talking about MySpace. I was on MySpace. How old are you? 33. Okay, well, I'm 32. Yeah, so yeah. same. Um, you post a blog and a bulletin, and then you'd upload all the photos, and then it, there'd be like a piece of fire that on MySpace that was like, sure. so-and-so has 11 new photos, and then people would go, you know, see Check what out I was sending traffic directly from eBay to my, uh, MySpace, MySpace to eBay. eBay, and realized at a certain point, you know, and I was doing really well on eBay at a certain point, I was like, wait, why am I giving all my traffic away to this place where people can just comparison shop? Why wouldn't I... With other people's stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> so like anytime you list something on eBay, right. it'll say like other items you might like. And it has like all your competitors underneath. Yes. Like why would you, you know, at that point, starting a website was a lot more difficult than it is today. Ago, there yeah. was no square space. Like, right. you know, it was like. No WordPress. Got like a shopping cart called Interspire out of Australia and had like a friend from high school put it together. But um, yeah, I was like, why am I giving all of my great customers and all my marketing efforts away to someone else? So. I you launched, built the site. Launched the website. Nasty right? Gal. Nasty Gal. It was actually nastygalvintage.com. Then it was shopnastygal.com. And then I finally bought nastygal.com. How much? I bought nastygal.com for eight grand. That's not bad. From, never mind. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I could imagine. Yeah. Um, don't. Uh, not while I'm in the room. Um, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. What was this? When La- was Nasty This Gal? was, I launched the website in mid-2008. Okay. June 13th, 2008, actually. And it was a Friday, and the website just, like, sold out instantly. Really? I mean, all your inventory. All the inventory. So when you're on eBay, you have 10 days to let stuff just sit there. And your auctions go up, and it sits there, and people bid on it, and then you're like, cool, I don't have to ship anything for 10 days. I know when yes. all my orders are coming in. You launch a website. And you have one of a kind items they expect that like, people are like, oh my God, I have to get it now. It sold out super fast. Wow. And I was like, oh my God, like I'm drowning in orders. How do I handle this? I just got, I handled all the orders and I just ended up sick for like two weeks straight after that, but kept having to stock the store. And it was just like a totally different flywheel of, of, of work. <clears throat> um, and that was when I brought on my first employee. Really? Yeah. So you were doing it all yourself at first. Yeah. And then oh, you yeah. brought your first person For like on. the first year and a half. So 2008, you had your first employee. Yeah. And how many employees are there now? Do you know? A few hundred. A few it's hundred. Like always fluctuating. Yeah. So we have a team in Kentucky that does fulfillment and customer care. And then in LA, we have, you know, design, production, planning, merchandising, finance, everything. marketing, Branding, photography, everything. graphic design, and art direction. You know, the executive team, social media, sure. our editorial team. I mean, it kind of goes on. But it's a lot of people, yeah. It's running a lot of different businesses a little bit. Different businesses? Well, when you have that many, you have to be an expert at marketing yeah, to have a brand. That's true. To sell online, you have to be an expert at fulfillment. An Traffic expert generation. Customer yeah. Care. yeah. I mean, that's I mean that's how it is for everybody today, you right. know. But, um, yeah, I feel like there's companies that just become like a marketing agency, and that's like the only thing they have to know. How to do yes, almost, that's it. and then we have to like understand inventory and turn and retail. Know, reta- and like ah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Staging, right? 
Yeah, yeah, like the creative. <clears throat> absolutely. Yeah, so it's been amazing. It's been a lot of work, but it's been super fun. When you started the first year of this, did you think like, okay, I want to build this into this huge quarter mm. of a billion dollar brand? No. The first year, I never even knew that was possible. Mm. I mean, I didn't even really even consider it a business for a long time. You know, I was like, I've got an eBay store. This just making but you money to survive. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I kept the money in the business. I didn't, like, take it. I didn't want things at that time in my life. And food. I didn't, like, need vacations. I was 22. I was just, yeah. like, happy to go, like, scoot around at a dive bar sure. with my friends. And, you know, that you know, I still do that once in a while. But it gets <laughs> old at a certain point. Of course. Um, yeah, so I just kept socking money away at a certain point. Uh, the company had saved, and I have a screenshot of this. I had saved a million dollars cash in, like, just like, yeah, in profit. Uh, and then I had, like, I think I had, like, eight grand to my name. Like, wow. I, you can see both the accounts. It's like corporate ink, nasty yell ink, corporate <laughs> accounts. And it's like $975,000. And then mine's like $8,000. I'm like, I don't know. I was Why paying, would you like, pay yourself? I was, but I just didn't, like, I didn't really want stuff. I was so busy working. Yeah. You know, when you find something that you love doing that much, that is that rewarding mm. and you can tweak out on it and people enjoy it. And then you realize that the better you do it, the more people engage and the more customers that you have and the more demand there is. It's like, there's nothing more, there's nothing more exciting than that. Yeah. Did yeah. you say tweak out on it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, like I've it. never done like it. tweak or whatever, you know, <laughs> I don't even know what, the, you know. Yeah. That's the but, way of it, yes. But I've seen people, like, do that, and it's very, dis- it's very <laughs> descriptive. <laughs> now, I'm curious. The thing that impresses me about you, I think I first heard about you was when you were on the cover of Entrepreneur Magazine. I think that was a, a couple of years ago, maybe? It was maybe? a while ago. A that was maybe ago? 2013, 2014. No, I can't re- I don't remember. I remember even, like, who is this person? I never heard of you, never heard of this company. I mean, obviously, I'm not a girl that buys No, it's fine. Clothes, yeah, unless you were, like, like, into vintage. Right. And I was like, who is this girl? And then I just, after that point, it's like I saw you everywhere. You were just on the cover of Forbes magazine. I don't know if it's still oh out God. this month. No. But it was yeah. last month, right? It was last month I was on the cover of Forbes. Uh, it's crazy. You're publicity. like a press magnet. And I don't understand. I'm oh, curious man. how you've done it. Because obviously, you've got to have a great <laughs> company that you built. Yeah. So you can talk about that in your story. But Totally. Like you have tapped into something that most female entrepreneurs don't do. Yeah, I think, you know, the fact that I'm a community college dropout and have a history of petty theft mm. that I published in my book. My story is different. Yeah. Uh, I'm not proud of, you know, either of those things necessarily. Um, I'd love to finish school at some point. But, uh, you know, I think a lot of the female leaders that, um, you know, we've had to look up to are really hyper-educated and yeah. b- work their way up the ladder. And there's less female entrepreneurs that have been... Um, that have been highlighted, and I think that's really changed since, you know, I mean, Forbes was who broke my story, not on the cover, but in 2012, they did a four, four pages, and that wow, was like the first huge. business feature ever on Nasty Gal that's and on big. me. Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, but today, you know, starting a business is so much easier. There's, I mean, there's still a huge disparity in women getting funded as, you know, entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. but, but there's more and more of us, yeah. and that feels really different, but I feel like I was the first one to, like, come out maybe right, i don't right. know just like be like hey guys leading the charge yeah yeah and yeah i've under i've learned a lot about marketing and publicity and the power of it and yeah. i used to think it was dirty and it's really? important it's important you think it was dirty when you were doing it on myspace or no because i was like behind a computer but there's something about like you know just your face being everywhere. Like promoting yourself. Yeah, but self-promotion. I was always this. promoting my business. Yeah, yeah, that. This. Exactly, right? <laughs> you know, our, our pose is almost similar. Right? Well, almost identical. Yours is much more. I don't know. Girl bossy. I have a smaller waist. It's okay. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> you can say that. You know, it's interesting. <laughs> talking about book covers, I remember when I was writing the book, I was like, you know what? I don't want my face on this cover. I want it to be like this, you know, I don't know. I don't want it to be about me. I don't want it to be like too promotional and self-centered but to be your honest, publisher was like no they're like we have to and then the more i do it like no one recognizes malcolm gladwell necessarily like walking down the street maybe uh-huh. like now that he's got his face out there for different things but mm-hmm. for his books like no one ever you wouldn't recognize him mm-hmm. 
And I think um, it adds a lot of value when you build a personal branch. You can generate more in speaking gigs. There's totally. more credibility. People follow people. That's it. You know? Not just and, like a cover. Of like, and people follow authors, but, you know, yeah. it's it's a it's a tool. And if you're comfortable, I've yeah. gotten comfortable. And I'm still an introvert. Like yeah, I, I can tell. was totally wasted yesterday <laughs> after, not drunk, but just like. Exhausted. Yeah, I did an all-day shoot where I had to like pretend to use an iPad like. I mean, I, I can't talk about it, but yeah, I was like, I, I was just like, you know, I don't know how actors do it. You know, I thought people were like, oh, you work so hard. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm doing stuff like pretending to do stuff is really hard. Right. And it requires so much patience. And um, and there's so many people telling you what to do and where to go and, you know, go do whatever. I'm just whatever. Anyway, when there's that many people demanding things like in person mm. i kind of melt down and i felt that yesterday right. i think i have a little bit of a hangover today actually it's all good which is why it's nice that you know i have headphones on right now yeah it's like you're there's in a not safe a, space. Like 500 people yeah looking at us that's it yeah that's it. i'm curious um without press or building your personal brand do you think your company would do as well or be where it's at today if you weren't in the news as much as you are or in the mainstream TV and magazines. And I don't know. You know, you can never, I mean, in terms of my personal brand and girl boss, absolutely not. With Nasty Gal, you know, I think the brand itself has always been strong yeah. outside of all of that press. And it's yeah. always been for the customer. And it's always been. The quality been, of the product's been great. And yeah. It's always been like for that girl. And, you know, it has been a lot of word of mouth. Do I think it's helped? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that. As a brand, you know, we want to have an untraditional strategy, but, you know, right. it's just, yeah, marketing can be really, can be really fuzzy, I mm-hmm. think, and how to get it right, especially when you have a brand that's as unique as, as Nasty Gal. Sure. If there's a, a female or male entrepreneur listening who's in the middle of starting a brand or maybe they've already done a couple of years and they're trying to get it to the next level, what would you give them advice about press? Would it be more about honing in on your story and making sure mm-hmm. you're unique? And would you say put energy into getting press or yeah. into something else first? I would say definitely have people, other people pitch press on your behalf. Never, ever pitch your own press. Really? I feel like that's all I've ever done. Really? If it works. Yeah, for me it but does. Like but like in the same I'm way that like if you're going to send like a threatening letter to somebody, you want it to be like one degree separated or if you're going to be like, excuse me, this isn't okay. Like having right. people that can act on your behalf yeah. Puts you in a position to, I mean, it looks like you have a team, yes, you know? So even if it's you writing from like a blind email address, right. like, hi, I represent Lewis. <laughs> right. Um, it looks like you've got like more going on. Sure. Or that, what, that, you makes know? that makes sense. That makes sense. I, think I mean, I'm shameless too, but I do yeah, think yeah. that pitching yourself is, is tough. Um, and then I think just like bring your A game. I mean, the mm. first thing I learned, you know, there was a woman named uh, Julie Supan who coached me through that first Forbes piece and I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea to how to tell the story. They will write the story that you present to them. Right. They'll write the story that of what happens in the room when you're there of, you know, if there is or isn't a podcast producer here, if um, Lewis answered his own door, if you know, whatever it is, um, they're going to tell the story of whatever happens and you can architect that, which is creepy, uh-huh. but strategic. And in many ways you can write your own stories. So. Um, and then I think my last piece of advice would be like, bring your A game. Like I learned like, you want more space in Forbes, bring them photos that they're going to want to use, right. you know? So you get four pages um, to So one. it's a little superficial, um, but I don't know, you know, it's like everything is at some point. Sure. Uh, just bring your A game, you know, look at the magazine and say like, what would, if there's no stylist on the shoot or whatever it is bring what you think they're going to want to publish. Um, so Forbes wants you to look like you might, you could be a billionaire someday so that later on they could be like, look, we talked about her back in 2012 and I didn't look like a ragamuffin, you know, (laughs) they like want that, that game and every publication is different. So reverse engineering what you think the art director or the editor wants, uh, when there's not someone there to do it with you, especially someone like Forbes. Yeah, right. They're not having an art director there or stylist probably. They didn't. Yeah. Even for the cover. That's crazy. That is crazy, right? They're so and like you know what I did? Business. I went on Net Porter and I dropped a shitload of money and then I, re- I wore a dress and I kept the tag on it and I returned everything. And that was like three months ago. So wow. I'm still pretty cheap. What's Net Porter? 
net a porte net a porte you don't know what that is no educate it's me. like a bazillion dollar european it's like the amazon of luxury oh, it's like one yeah. of the earliest e-commerce i buy like t-shirts that's so. fine yeah, yeah. i buy like for women they probably know water what it bottles is. women right. know what net a porte okay, is okay gotcha i mean it's just it's just super like, uh, expensive it's just like the but i like returned everything so. what's the other thing called save the dress or what's it called save oh rent the runway rent the runway save the dress <laughs> I don't know what it's kind of what they're doing right yeah, yeah. it's like a luxury no that's great runway. yeah and she's an amazing entrepreneur yeah, yeah. you should have her on the podcast have you had her on yours yeah that's she's great that's cool um now, I'm curious, Nasty Gal's blowing up, and then you decide to write a book, this book, Girl Boss. Why the book? Yeah, good question. I'm curious. You know, everything was already going so well for you. Why do this? Um, so I met an attorney just randomly because I needed someone to do some work for me when I moved to L.A. on regu- just regular stuff. Like, hey, can you have a phone call with, like, an architect? Uh-huh. Where were you living uh, or before? look at a contract. I'd mo- I moved the company here in late 2010 from San Francisco. Okay. Um, and I was in, introduced to an entertainment attorney and I'm not sure why, um, who had been at uh, Ziffer and Brittenham, which is just like a huge top firm for 25 years. And was like, listen, this is child's play. What do you want to do? You've got uh, amazing stuff going on here. You want to do, you want to be on TV? You want a book? What do you want to do? And I was like, ew, I don't want to be on TV, you know, and I've been on TV and who knows what's going to happen. But this was way back. You know, this book has been out for two years, yeah. two, two, almost two and a half years now. And uh, he was like a book. And I was like, I don't know. A book would be cool because it's such a legacy item. It is is something you put on your shelf. You have kids. You have grandkids. It doesn't matter if anybody buys your book. You still wrote a book. It's so cool. It's, it's, you know, if anybody else likes it, that's great. But like I got to put a lot of stuff that I believe I marked a moment in time. Mm -hmm. It's like legacy building, you know, and that's just cool, you know, because so much stuff lives and dies on the Internet. So. Um, I mean, this is in libraries. Like, that's so exciting that it's people are like, right? I couldn't afford your book. And I read in the library and it's like changed feeling. my life. Like the library comments on Twitter are like, <laughs> my favorite. um, but I was getting a lot of comments on Instagram and on social media, just like, Oh my God, how did you do it? I'm starting a business. Can you give me some advice? Some, they'd maybe read some of the business press, yeah. knew that this was an eBay store at some point. Some people had followed me from the eBay days and were watching, you know, how nasty gal had blown up. And, um, you know, I, I, I met with an agent at WME named Andy McNichol, who's amazing. And she was like, you know, I've, since set her up with other people and she's like yeah nope they don't have a book in them like she wow. we sat down and she was like what would you want to do and i was like i want to do a gateway drug for the business book section for for girls because like and it's not i mean for girls it's for anybody mm-hmm. but there's no books that are like funny and entertaining and educational and like really relatable like they're all like real square like yes. we're so square and they're so self-serious yeah. and they're really dogmatic and they tell you that if you follow all these steps then your life is going to be whatever fill in the blank and that's just not how it works so like a, a an honest kind of like here's what i know but i'm totally going to unlearn it by the time I write a third book and watch me, Right. watch me. <laughs> I am. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, here's what I know. Here's what I have to share. Take, take it and then throw it away and then go live your life. You go know, take action. Yeah. Um, so that's really what girl boss is about. 300,000 copies later. It's pretty impressive. That's my report card. What's a, that was your report card. Yeah. <laughs> Chooses to disturb others. <laughs> yeah. I wish I had some of that stuff from childhood. It's great, right? Yeah. Gosh. I Were yours f- good or bad? I mean, I was in the bottom four of my class. Oh, wow. All through school. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I couldn't read until about what? 16. Yeah. Where'd you grow up? I was in a in small town, Delaware, Ohio. I was in the special needs classes Amazing. with like three kids in wheelchairs. Because you were playing sports? No, I wasn't good at sports then either. I was just an idiot. Amazing. Yeah, I couldn't read. I couldn't write. I couldn't do anything. I don't believe you, but I cheated on that's every, amazing if it's every true. Single, every single test, I don't think I actually told this, but I've cheated, I cheated on almost every single test in middle school all the way through high school until I graduated. Because it's not because you were dumb. It's because you were like I, I wasn't a good test lazy. taker. <laughs> I would tr- practice and study and study and study. I could not comprehend the information. I couldn't mm. learn it. And then I would just be like frustrated. So I'd be like, screw this. And I would go and I became a master at cheating. Oh, wow. I, luckily for Scantrons. Welcome to the school of greatness. That's it, right? No, no, <laughs> exactly. no, no. no it's not. I'm not proud of this either. <laughs> no. There's yeah. things we both know totally. I'm proud of. I you mean, only I, learn by failing, yeah. right? And I, I learned that. I, I learned in a different way. You know, the reason I did the school of greatness was because I was like, there's so many things that they didn't teach us in school that I wish they would have. Principles that actually help us achieve 
the life of our dreams, mm-hmm. relationships, business, whatever it may be, our health. Like they didn't teach me that or I didn't learn it. So they don't really um, teach you much in school that no. honestly, no. And, and high school at least it's like, why do I need to know about like weird trigonometry? It's, yeah. And no one's going to tell me, you know, about debt. Or right. Like the things that are important. What to do when credit card offers come in the mail? Like <laughs> what do I do? Or get a parking ticket? Like, <laughs> come on. Exactly. That's life. Like Exactly. I hear you. Yeah. Was so was really struggling for you? School? Um <sighs> educationally, I mean, if I was interested in something I did really well. Yeah. If I liked the teacher, I would do pretty well. And the and it was like I just didn't respect a like I didn't respect ever I just felt like kind of trapped. You know, mm-hmm. I felt like I was put in a room, the same room every day, at least in high school and middle school. You're there for a certain period of time. A bell rings, and like, a, a, like a like a rat in a cage. It was like a Nine Inch Nails <laughs> song or something, or what? Yeah, um, you got to scurry to the like, next class. Go to the next one every day. Like, how soul crushing yeah. is that for children? I I'm like I, I I'm not I'm not gonna be like a hippie parent either if I'm ever a parent, but like to like put a child in the same chair every day, have a bell ring, and tell them to like go do the same thing. Mm. Oh, it's just like, yes, I think education is really important. I just, I don't, I don't have it figured out, but I do think that like everybody learns completely differently. I learn from doing things. I learn from engaging and asking questions. If you talk at me, I like glaze over, especially now that there's like iPhones and stuff. You're just like, what? But I'm like, what? I never heard anything. (laughs) If you don't, if you don't text me, I didn't hear it. Like, (laughs) no, but yeah, we all learn really differently. And I just feel like the public school system was not set up for me. me Yeah. Yeah, well, so. there's something in common. There's so I homeschooled. In. I homeschooled my senior year. Really? And moved out before I graduated. Super introvert then. Uh, yeah, I was just like, I like would go like and cry and like eat my pizza with my teacher, and I wasn't like. It was just you and your teacher? Was there a couple of you or no? No, I just would go like hang out with my like uh, political like like my social studies your teacher year? or whatever. Uh, that when was like before I homeschooled. Gotcha, gotcha. And then I homeschooled and. Uh, just was like was just my you? parents split up that same year and I was like oh, I mean I was like an only child and they were kind of strict and I was like see ya thanks guys wow I've been taking care of myself I mean they were great they right, I love right. my parents but I was like I had to like self fill in the blank uh-huh. in like many ways and yeah. I think that grew me up pretty quickly so who was more um influential to you your mom or your dad I can't answer that because, like, if ever my mom or dad listens to this, they'll be like, you said, mm, you mentioned okay. your dad more in your book than you mentioned me. Right, you said right. you were Greek, but you didn't say you were Italian or whatever. Okay. They, they're, they're great. But I'll shift the question. Shift it. What's uh, <laughs> what's the most, um, the biggest lesson you learned from each of them growing yeah, up? Yeah, I guess my dad's, like, a uh, mother effer. You know, he's, like, hardcore. Like, we would go on bike rides and he'd be, like, a mile ahead of me, like, hurry up. Like it wasn't like la di da. Like it wasn't like we're going to, you know, do recreation. Sure, this was like, like I'm going on a bike ride and you're coming with me, kid. We're training. You know, so I was like treated like a boy, and which I think is many ways is is, is like awesome, you know. Mm. Um, and yeah, so just like keep up. I think I yeah. learned from. I mean, cr- he was very critical. So mm. like I learned to be self-critical. Um, do you think that hurts you in any way? Oh yeah, totally. But that's like mine to work out mm. and like, I'll be fine. You sure, know, sure. I tell you just like, it's up to you to turn like your damage into a strength. And of like, course. that's like, that's kind of like, and yeah. And it's just to keep learning and taking feedback about mm. who you are, how you behave, what your triggers are, whatever. Like I don't <laughs> go to that much therapy, but like I know some stuff. Just uh, three times a week. No big deal. No, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, From my mom. Gosh, I mean, I think like writing, she's an amazing writer and she's a great communicator and she's like, she's really cerebral to the point of like over communicating sometimes. And she, she wouldn't be surprised. She wouldn't be surprised if I said that. Um, and I've learned to like chill on that because Mm. some things, some, you know, I've learned, I've learned about time and space and letting people come to their own conclusions and like subtlety and not just like I can be very knee jerk and that's my dad and then I can also be very knee jerk and communicative which is like oh my god (laughs) uh so yeah but like being responsible with those gifts is something that I've learned and keep learning what would you say is the moment uh in growing up that you're the least proud of who um probably a relationship I had in Portland with a uh alcoholic uh absentee 
dad who was a fry cook. Um, yeah, it was like, I had like my first real relationship was pretty trashy, but I, I didn't, I don't even know how I went up there. I just wound up, I just wound up there and you're how like, wait you? a second. Like, this is so not me. <clears throat> I'm like, I'm like yelling and this guy like just like threw the TV on the floor like, this doesn't happen. I grew up with this garbage. Like, how do I mm. make sure that this is not my future? And right. I eventually figured it out. That's I don't good. yell or throw things or slam doors. That's but nice. Yeah. Okay. And what would you say is... But I can be really mean. <laughs> can you be? <laughs> yeah. In what way? And I'm not proud. I don't know. I just, like... The things you know. say, the way you act. But, or? like, the best part is, like, being capable of it and then just restraining yourself and letting people drive themselves crazy. You know what I mean? What do you mean by that? Never mind. Not being mean? Yes. And then people drive themselves crazy because you're not mean? Never mind. Maybe this, I'm just talking about my experience today. There's like a crazy uh, chick in my life right now. So uh, it's fine. You're just letting her run around and try I'm to. Like I feel like I'm in a relationship with like a crazy chick. Uh, it's fine. I don't even know if it's like a female positive to use the term crazy chick, but mm. there's crazy chicks and crazy yeah, dudes. That's crazy like guys, they crazy exist. Chicks. Absolutely. It is what it is. Do you have a lot of stalkers? Uh, I had one. <laughs> girl or guy a guy <laughs> okay yeah there's a restraining order no way I've never, Still? Talked, I've never talked about this i mean i don't think it like goes away well, I, have I, don't to, I don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know if you're out there <laughs> i've got a bad hair i've got a dog that speaks polish <laughs> and only responds to me wow what happened are you allowed to talk about this or no? no okay i don't know i'm allowed to talk about whatever i want but i'd rather sure. not don't okay. get any ideas okay there you go <laughs> wow is that scary for you, being in the public eye so much now? It's Yeah, it's pretty scary. Being a girl, I mean, I feel... Yeah, it's scary. But mostly it's just like cool girls. You know, people get really That's excited good. and they you jump on you photos. sometimes and you're like, oh my God, my personal space, help. You know, it's a lot of like, you know, but I, I welcomed it into my life. I mean, I love the girls that read the book, that come yeah. to the book events. Like, it's so rewarding. I mean, I had like 400 girls singing happy birthday to a girl who came to a book event on her 18th birthday by herself. Oh. And I was like, you guys, it's your birthday. Can you please sing your happy birthday? And like oh, 400 wow. girls sang happy birthday in a Barnes & Noble. Amazing. In Union Square. Um, but yeah, as like an introvert can be very psychically draining. Yes. Uh, so I have to have time to like recover. recover. Yeah. yeah. What would you say is the most proud moment that most people don't know about you? Proud thing you've done or proud moment? Mm. Big or small? Proud moment. Um, I, I mean, I think it was just buying my first car. I bought like a Nissan used. When was this? Uh, this was like 2008 maybe. Mm. That same like, year I launched the website. But I had never really, you know, I had like a $3,000 Volvo that my parents had helped me buy. And it was like an 87. And I loved it. But it didn't have any cup holders. I really wanted cup holders. And so that's why I got the Nissan right. but um yeah I, yeah it was just like I saved up like I put like 10 grand down on like an $18,000 car and then had like an insane like I'd like 11% interest on the remainder and so as soon as I could I paid it off but wow. yeah like buying I've driven a Porsche I drive a different car now uh like Oh, I, I bought that Jaguar F-Type for like four months and I was like, this thing drags every, it drags on the ground. Like <laughs> I can't even fit the shit I buy like in the back. Like how sure. is this luxury? I don't sure. So I like, I kind of like cars. I saw you driving some vintage car last week that broke down and you had to tow it or oh, something. Oh yeah. Yeah. I have, I have a vintage Mercedes and it was like an $87 fix, but I did have to get it towed. But like, oh. um, there's nothing like buying your first car. Mm. It's just you're never as proud. Like it doesn't matter like how nice your interior is yeah. on the next one. Like there's a first. You do something the first time. Sure. It's never that exciting again. <laughs> I don't know. I'm only 32, so. Sure. What I might be wrong. You, what brings you the most fulfillment in your life right now? Mm. When you're doing what, it brings you the most joy and fulfillment. When I'm with my friends. When I'm with my friends and my family because, you know, there's work is really important and mm -hmm. a lot of what I do isn't work. It doesn't feel like work and it's really rewarding. Um, but I would just say like the people who really matter are so important to keep yeah. close and they'll be there for you sure. when the shit hits the fan. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. I think just like leaning on your friends is yeah. like, or just them leaning on you, you know, right. is like, or just hanging out, like, I don't know, just being like, wow, I've had this friend for 10 years, and it's great. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. You know, I feel like women have uh, a challenge right now as female entrepreneurs. I feel like it's, in general, 
it's harder for them to become more entrepreneurial. I think more and more it's happening. There's a lot of women out there who are doing it. Mm-hmm. But what do you think is the the biggest thing they're going to have to overcome? Knowing what you've done in the last 10 years, if they're just starting out, they're having a little bit, maybe they're making six figures in sales in their business, mm-hmm. but they're trying to grow. What's the biggest challenge they're going to face? I mean, I think it's different for everybody. Um, I think it's I think it's really like an individual thing. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to kind of, to be broad about that. Um, I would say... I would say you have an advantage in many ways um, right now because uh, more and more people want to invest in female-run businesses. I would say if you can get into something that isn't like, um, I guess they call it shrink it and pink it, like just obvious women stuff. Like I got into mm-hmm. fashion, but I took investment way before like, you, you know, fab.com like went bust and, you know, e-commerce is just in a different space in uh-huh. terms of taking investment. So if you can be in a science or technology or engineering area you're really rare Mm. I think just like going where other people aren't going is always a good idea and just not showing up in the room and being like I'm you know fill in the blank I'm different because I'm a girl I'm different because I'm don't have a college education I'm different because I haven't done what everyone else here has done I just think like showing up and not being cocky, but like right. knowing that you're in the room for a reason is really important yeah. um, and participating like you belong there. Yeah. Um, and that goes for anybody. Sure. What do you think people misunderstand about you the most? I think people think that I'm like, um, you know, I'm not per- I'm not smiling on the cover. Of my- you're smiling on the cover of your book. <laughs> a little bit. I'm not. You've got a little. I've got, I like, my eyes curled. are a little soft. Yeah, little yeah soft. I'm like sneering, <laughs> sneering at you. Yes. No, um, you know, I'm like in a power pose and I have like a harsh haircut and, you know, I think my hair, you know, I, I think I can look severe, but I, uh, but like once you talk to me, I'm like really mm. easy, generally pretty easy to talk yeah. to you. So I think it's maybe the per- perception that I'm like, you know, some like Russian spy caricature mm. who's like... <laughs> you know whatever sure, do you know what i mean sure, of course like yeah. i don't th- i just is not the case but i do think that i mm. i i photograph that way so yeah, yeah. it's all good it's a great shot though thanks what's the big fear for you right now i mean again a quarter of a billion dollar company you've had so much success book netflix show podcast which i want to make sure everyone goes and listens to as well which we'll talk about fear do you have a big fear of anything hmm. big fear um, You've gotten so big now. Is it too big? I mean, big? the fear is like, yeah, living up to the noise. Mm. And some of that noise is my own creation. Some of it's the creation of other people. Doesn't really matter. You take responsibility for it publicly right. regardless. Um, I think, you know, continuing to win. I think that even though I had have a really honest story, right. like I've achieved something and it's expected that I just like keep winning. And so far, like, I'm not, you know, like, I'm not, like, losing, but there's ups and downs to anything. Right. Um, And what if I want to drop off the planet for a year? What if I just want to, like, go chill or, like, do something for myself? I have a responsibility to an audience as you, you you know, um, that I think is, you know, that's just, it's, you know, a fear. Yeah, I think is, like, not, I mean, I'm not going to live up to it. Yeah. I think my fear is just knowing that I'm not going to live up to it. Right. Live up to what? the hype yeah yeah it's just you don't you just and maybe you're the only person that knows that right and maybe you just die in fear i don't know but (laughs) sure (laughs) do you feel like if you so inspiring do you feel like if you spent you know let's say six months to a year where you're like i'm gonna take a vacation from it all yeah and no more press no more social media yeah i'm not gonna be creating content no more podcast no more book writing and then you try to come back yeah how hard would, would it be for you to come back and be kind of at the top i have no idea hmm. i have no idea i don't know i'd have to like ask people who have done that have done <laughs> yeah. that or have worked with a managed or been sure. publicist or agent or i'm sure people have done that i think you tell a story around it like mm. they had a baby right, or right. like that's a good that's probably a good excuse you know it's you the only want, reason to have children do you want to have a family in the kidding. future yeah at some point some point yeah yeah What, um, I'm curious what your vision is next. Again, with all this going on, like why do you keep bringing new things on? Again, I'm, a the podcast, mean, I'm a masochist. The book, the next book, I'm a masochist. Show. No, I really am. Okay. I like have an idea and I'm like, nobody said I can't. 
Right. Well, I'm going to go do it. You mm-hmm. know, that's it. It's just like, Do so you have a vision or is it just um, random? No, it's not random. Uh, you know, I've learned to pace things out better than I used to. I used to be like, I want to do everything at, at once. one time. And that's just, that's so hard on teams. It's hard um, on your It's really heart. hard on your, it's really hard on yourself. <laughs> it's hard on anything. So um, I would say my vision is to keep doing stuff that inspires people. Mm. That's honest. Um, that is fun where I get to create things. You know, I get to do projects now. I get to executive yeah. produce a show and see what that's like. That's I get amazing. to write a book and, um, you know, be a podcast host yeah. and, um, you know, it's so fun to stretch yourself in ways that you never would have anticipated yeah. and who knows where that will go. I think it's, um, as much about like personal growth and enrichment for me as it is about like the actual thing that I'm doing. Sure. I think a lot of it is just like stretching, you know, expanding, like, you know, like a thing you put in a shoe that's a little too small. That's just like, <laughs> All I do all day. That's good. Yeah. Okay. But you've yeah. learned to pace it better now. I'm, tr- yeah, I yeah. a lot, a As lot. Especially having, I have a really great assistant who's like, yeah, she's out there. Right? Yeah. She's great. Holly, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think just she's like, I think this is a little too much. And, right. you know, I've had assistants who were also great, but were like, you know, maniacs like me. And they were like, let's all do right, it. Let's like, do bring it. it on. Let's just do everything. Like, you know, to, mm. not, to not make everything an equal priority takes a lot of maturity. Yeah, and sure. I have a little maturity now. So that's good. That's nice. What's a question um, no one's ever asked you that you wish they asked? Mm. I don't like wish people ask me questions, right? Well, like, like who answer. like wakes up and says like, I wished, I wish people would just ask me like, I don't know. Um, or is there anything that you've always wanted to share that you haven't been able to share yet? I've shared everything. Yeah. It's disgusting. <laughs> um, nothing. 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 Okay. My mind is blank. It's okay. Well, I've got three final questions for okay. you. Okay. Okay. Uh, before before I ask them, I want to make sure everyone goes gets this book, Girl Boss, Girl Boss, and also download the podcast, Girl yeah. Boss. It's in the top hundred. It's crushing it on iTunes. You're only interviewing women, right? Yeah. Who are just crushing it in life and mm-hmm. business, entrepreneurial totally. brands. You've got some amazing people on there. I saw you had Jessica Thanks. Alba. Who are some other names you had on there? Jessica Alba hasn't been on it yet, oh, but she, she was at my her. office and I Instagrammed. Gotcha. Um, we've had... Rufar Nushan, who's a mutual friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've had uh, Beth Comstock, who's the vice chair at GE. Um Charlize, who's producing the Netflix show, mm. was the first guest. I've had wow. Kate Cannon, who's also working on the Netflix show, who wrote Pitch Perfect and Pitch Perfect oh, 2. Wow. Um, it's like, it's not super celebrity heavy. I've had uh, Alyssa Mastromonaco, who was the deputy chief of staff to President Obama. Whoa. And she's now the chief operating officer at Vice. She's amazing. That's a really good one. Top girl bosses. Top. Top. Top and in the middle, you know? It's yeah. like, but women who have like an interesting story. Everyone st- has started in a different place. Yeah. Some of these women went to great schools. Some of them didn't go to school. Some of them are creative. Some of them are business people. And mm. I try to find like a humanizing, like common ground element through that, which is yeah. just that everybody starts somewhere. Sure. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, make sure everyone go and download Girl we'll Boss it. Girl Radio. Girl Boss Radio. Um, check out the Netflix show, which will be out in what a year? Uh, yeah, sometime next year, sometime 2017. Year. And get the book when it comes out. You can pre-order it right now. Yes, the new Nasty book, Galaxy. Nasty Galaxy. Yeah. And then do you have a personal site as well? Um, just girlboss.com. Girlboss.com. Yeah. And all your socials on there. Follow you everywhere because you're hilarious. Follow and me amazing. at Sophia Amoruso on the Instagram, the Snapchat, and the Twitter. The Insta Snap now. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't which even know about that. Snapchat. Forget it. I don't think I'm going to be but honest I still anymore. like messaging. I do like messaging a little bit, but. But you can do it on Instagram. Oh, you can do messaging too? Yes. You just oh, turn the it on DM thingy. Yeah. I still like Snapchat better because yeah. it disappears. Well, so does Instagram. I don't know enough then. Well, it's only one day, so. It's been out for a day. It's been out for a day. Yeah. Give it some time. All right. I'll give it some time. Um, what are you most grateful <laughs> for in your life recently? Um, I'm grateful for. Adversity. Hmm. I'm grateful for the garbage that shines a light on the things that really matter so I can constantly be reminded of like why life is worth living hmm. and uh, why I still have so much to learn. That's great. Yeah. A lot of adversity right now? I mean, 
Yeah, personally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is a question called the three truths. Oh, God. Okay. All right. So imagine your life many, many years from now, uh, and it's the last day for you. But all of the books you've written, the thousand books you've written at this time, because you're a maniac and you write that many. Thousand. All the movies, TV shows are gone for whatever. They're erased. Uh They're gone. Uh Something happened to them. They're gone. Uh, And everyone's there, all your friends and family, the people you love the most. And they say, we don't have anything else to to remember you by. Can you write down three things you know to be true on a piece of paper Mm. as your final three thoughts? That's a great question. So what would be your three truths? (sighs) Oh, man. It's like what I am or what I want to be. That's the question. And I, I can pick, you know, I can flatter myself or I can be honest. Let's three see. things that you would. That I want to be remembered by. Um, or your three truths to, for the world. Yeah. Uh, crea- creative. Um, honest. Maybe generous. Okay. Yeah. These would be the three things you would be remembered by. Yeah. So what about three things? Like things, like books? Like a, like a three messages, truths. Truths. So like love is all you need. Oh, like, oh, okay. Like a message that you would give to the world. Oh, okay. Not like about live. me. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Got it. But those three things are great about you. I like all right, those. whatever. Thanks. Those work. So okay. three truths <laughs> that you would give back to the world is like, here's my three points of the Bible. Um, you don't know shit. Uh-huh. Um, don't give up. <laughs> And uh, be compassionate. Those are great. Yeah. I like those. Okay. Do you feel compassionate? Yeah. 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 That's good. Okay. I've got uh, one final question. Before I ask it, I want to take a moment to acknowledge you, Sophia. I want to acknowledge you for your incredible drive. Thanks. And your incredible creativity. Thanks. Your incredible passion and energy for the vision that you had and bringing it to life. Thanks. There aren't that many people that have done what you've done especially 32-year-old women who have used to dive in dumpsters to get food and, uh, you know, check IDs all day and build something from a simple idea without having proof or evidence that it was going to come to life like this. So I acknowledge you for the Thank consistency you. You. over a decade of just showing up yeah, and constantly that's all learning. you just have to keep showing up. It's, a, it's amazing what you've created. Thanks. So I acknowledge you for Thank all you so of much. It, of course. The final question okay. is what is your definition of greatness? My definition of greatness is being happy with the results of how you spend your time. I don't know. I think it's like, I think it's just, it's a personal definition yeah. that you have to make for yourself because other people make it for you. You're probably never going to get there. And even if you make it for yourself, you'll probably never get there. I think it's just showing, it's again, it's showing up every day. Right. That's it. Like, I think that's greatness. Awesome. So yeah. You. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Hey guys, Lewis Howes here. And thanks so much for checking out this video and this interview. I hope you loved it. If you did, make sure to leave a comment below and share this with your friends. Also, I've got a huge announcement. The Summit of Greatness is coming very soon. If you love the School of Greatness podcast, if you love these interviews, and you want more, you want to connect with some of these speakers in person, you want to connect with me and other people just like you who watch and listen to these interviews, then make sure to sign up for the Summit of Greatness. Go to summitofgreatness.com to learn more. You can check out more about the video that we have that we created for the summit. There's a link in the description below as well. It's summitofgreatness.com. Check it out right now. I hope to see you there. And again, thanks so much for watching this video.